Other news tonight, a Livingston County woman living in fear of a controversial parole decision tonight. Floyd Jarvie was convicted of raping her nearly 30 years ago. He's been eligible for parole since 2014. It was finally granted in October. The state attorney general filed an appeal arguing his release will put the public at risk. But at this point, freedom is just six days away. 7 Action News reporter Brett Cass talked to the victim about Jarvie's impending release. It's like a living nightmare and uh, at the same time it's real. Nearly 30 years ago, when Wendy Morrison was still a teenager, her life changed forever. She was on her way home from a waitressing job when a man followed her and ran her off the road before raping her and torturing her at gunpoint. He's like the blue-eyed devil in my mind because the things that he told me and the things that he threatened me with that night. Wendy will never forget that night and hopes the Department of Corrections won't either. The man who assaulted her, Floyd Jarvie, was arrested and convicted on multiple charges in 1994. He was given a maximum sentence of 60 years, but a minimum sentence of 25 years, meaning he's been up for parole since 2014. I was 19 years old. It felt so far away. I like could never come almost. And then it was here. This October, the parole board granted Jarvie parole, saying he accepts responsibility, has satisfactory block reports, and his violent behavior has diminished. He's set to be released on December 20th. It feels like my prison sentence now starts, you know, because he's everywhere if you don't know where he is. I was disappointed, frankly. David Morse is the former Livingston County prosecutor who prosecuted the case. He's now retired, but has appeared with Wendy at multiple parole hearings on her behalf. Uh, this is the only case in which, uh, after, in 30 years of prosecution, that I showed up for uh, a parole hearing to oppose parole. Wow, so it was that important to you? Yes, it was a bad case. Morse still opposes parole and feels Wendy's concerns are well-founded, given the nature of this case. What concerned me here was the two things. Uh, one was the predatory behavior uh, exhibited in this case, and the second thing was the, uh, uh, the threats that he had made against Wendy and her family at the time. But with a week until release, the Attorney General's office is filing an appeal, calling Jarvie a danger to the public. They are filing for a stay to keep him in prison past the 20th. If I were the judge, I would want to know why um, the parole board, I want to know from both sides, in a full and complete hearing. Attorney Todd Perkins is not connected to the case, but believes the state will likely be granted, and ultimately a decision will be made by a judge on Jarvie's future. This young lady is still hurting, still traumatized. I, I don't doubt that. But at the end of the day, if a person has served a portion of the sentence, that's what the rules are. Outstanding recognition for um, support for the community. In the 30 years since the attack, Wendy has received numerous awards for her advocacy work in helping trauma victims while still dealing with her own trauma and fighting to keep her attacker behind bars. I just am super grateful because let's just, it's, we've waited this long, let's just make sure this is the right decision. And as part of this parole decision, Jarvie has to wear a GPS monitor. He's not allowed near Wendy, and he's not allowed in Livingston County. It's unclear if he is an attorney, and due to the pending appeal, the Department of Corrections declined comment. Now the hearing for the stay is set to happen tomorrow in Howell at 3 p.m. I'm Brett Cast, 7 Action News.